Hey guys, welcome back to the second chapter of Rigid Body Simulation series. This is Ram from Crossmind Studio and today we are going to talk about the animated toggle feature which is there and how you can control certain aspect about your simulation with this. So by default when you have rigid body enabled on any object and let's say if this collides with uh, the plane over here, the only thing you're going to get is the motion that is coming from the, the mass, gravity and all that. So it's not going to follow any direction unless you have uh, certain guides for this, let's say like force field or or uh, if there are any other colliding object with this but let's say if you want this cube to follow certain direction and a certain kind of a motion uh, into the rigid body simulation so you can do that with the help of animated feature over here so what this means is if you enable this when this toggle is enabled any any information which is there in the timeline so let's say if this cube was over here and, uh, around frame 20 this cube moves over here and rotates like this all right so this is the kind of motion now at this moment this is an uh, animated object it's not actually behaving like a rigid body the dynamic object now what we want over here is we want this object to stay animated till somewhere around frame 50 we can toggle this on and off within the animation which we have created over here and what will happen is any information such as like velocity or the twist which is happening post the toggle when this turns into a dy dynamic object motion is going to carry forward and going to help the rigid body simulation so let me just show you with a practical example so if i set key over here with i and uh, at this moment this one is animated object so somewhere in between any uh, anywhere uh, in between your animation you can do that so on the frame 16 i'll disable this and now it's a uh, dynamic object set another key now go back to frame one now you can see how this one is falling down way further and it's following the same direction now let's say if this plane had more bounciness bounciness and friction something like this So that's what you can do with the animated toggle. Now, the only thing to keep in mind regarding this is if you want to make any changes into the animation. So on the frame 20, if I wanted this cube to move further above and uh, I want to make any changes into the animation, let's say if I move this up, then it won't let me change that because at this moment, it's not an animated object, it's a dynamic object. So just enable this again, but don't set the key on this. Enable this again and this will let you move your object just like a reg regular object and then uh, let's say till over here I want this cube to go and then set the key. Now you can see I didn't set the key, I just enabled this to uh, get the controls back on the transformation. Now you can see how this one is way further than before because there is much more uh, much more height we gave this object in the animation so there is more force so keep in mind it's only going to pick up from the, the velocity from the animation so if your object was moving from this point to only this point then it's going to just maybe have a very little uh, motion but if your object was moving from this point to this point in very few frames then it's obviously going to create much more velocity and then it's going to go much further so that way you can uh, control your rigid body simulations and that's what we i used to create this totem uh, simulation over here and also if you remember from the explosion tutorial the can simulation which you see over here so this was actually a rigid body but the early frames, just like how I showed you in this example, the early frames were toggled from the animated object into a dynamic object. So you can do that and play around with different kind of settings till the time you get nice simulation which works for you. That's about it for this one. And now what we can do is uh, we can just create one nice scene with this. And uh, I, I think uh, this example, the totem example is uh, very good for this one. So for that, let's create a simple cube now to make this one into uh, a totem let's let's bring a, a cylinder object 
now bring one cylinder over here so keep in mind you can use uh, the revolve i mean uh, the screw modifier with the spline modeling if you want just like how we modeled the can in one of the tutorial so you can do that and there is no right or wrong way about uh, how to model a totem the only thing you would want to keep in mind is uh, don't make it like a complete pointy totem so let's say if i select this and make this one into zero uh, let's say if i scale this one into zero if this one is like a perfect sharp corner then your totem might would end up spinning forever so just keep that in mind like give it a nice surface something something realistic i mean there is nothing like a zero uh, surface in the, in the real world i'm just going to give it some bevel some bevel over here some bevel over here and yeah that's about it something like this and these patches we are going to use uh, the grid fill grid fill on top of this yeah something like this and also i would instead use the soft selection i mean uh, the proportionate editing tool pardon my uh, i always keep um, uh, keep mixing up different softwares or terminology and but at the end of the day it's solving the same purpose so nothing wrong so something like this uh you uh, you can create a simple totem shape you you can give it any shape you want so okay so let's just uh, set origin to geometry just in case all right so we have the totem model ready and uh, let's turn this into rigid body object and bring one ground plane over here something like this and rigid body into passive because this is going to be a uh, ground plane so no friction no bounciness on this one and move our object slightly above all right something like this i just want to enable the shadows and cavity so that we can see things better all right on this totem rigid body and uh, make this one into animated on the frame one i'll just uh, set a key default location and rotation and uh, maybe give this one slight tilt just like a realistic uh, uh, totem i mean uh, we don't want this to be always perfectly aligned and otherwise it's, it's gonna just look boring and uh, won't have any like shaky or wobbly uh, motion so we just want some sort of realistic noise in the motion on the frame 10 i'll put it over here and tilt this other way and in the z direction uh, maybe we can make this one into 3600 rotation and set a key over here so again key into location and rotation and on the frame uh, now let's uh, disable the the auto key over here and uh, toggle uh, hit i on animator over here on the frame 8 on the frame 9 let's turn this into a dynamic object animate uh, just uh, hit the key again over here and this way we should get a nice motion going on for us okay this is perfect that looks good now let's see what's going on in the rotation i mean we can't really see since there is no texture or anything so i just hit uh i just bring one cube over here and just place it on this totem and parent this with the main totem so we can see the rotation and how much it's actually spinning all right so there you go so this looks fine and uh, the only thing i want i would want to do about this maybe i want this to have much more speed so on the frame 10 uh, let's increase this into 7600 and hit i in the z rotation and hopefully we'll get more rotation into this let's try something much more drastic okay so now it's spinning kind of faster we can't really see how much it's spinning because uh there is no motion bar or texture so 
but i think uh it's pretty much there so maybe we can uh play with the friction settings and all that before that what i'll do is uh we can just bring one curve force over here so at this moment it's just uh spinning in one place or maybe just moving in certain direction over here like uh and moving towards the right so it's only moving in the one direction so just like uh actual totem like how it uh spins like in the random uh circles so we want that kind of motion for our uh, object over here so i'll just bring one uh, curve over here instead let's uh, bring one sorry this this is not a curve circle i want curve circle so maybe give this one uh, free uh vector and uh, distort this a bit try and keep the the spline closed loop if you're using using it for force field otherwise uh, uh it kind of uh, disrupts your uh, the motion of the object i mean if it has a open and close point so i mean the behavior is a bit different so on this one let's apply 2000 strength in the mind negative uh, force and instead of point let's make this one curve and see how much this helps our simulation okay so one important thing over here i don't want this force field to affect the rotation i mean we already have the rotation and this could interfere with that so let's disable this and i just want this to uh, kind of guide the location of the totem and gravitational could be useful uh so yeah so i'll turn this down to minus 30 because uh, we are using gravitational over here so i experimented uh before the tutorial uh few settings so that, that that's how i know it so let's see how this looks now hopefully this should give us uh Let's align the curve with with the object over here. All right, so it's following the the arc over here, which is good. Minus five hundred. Let's uh, add some sort of a flow into the force field. We don't want this to. Uh, loose effect over here we just want yeah so this is looking good and hopefully it will stop over here stop over here yeah yeah this is looking good and i think we are more or less done so i'll just open the final file over here and uh, give you a breakdown of what's going on and it's exactly the same setup i'll leave the file on the gumroad and our patreon users can uh, download this file from the page all right so let's go to the final file all right so here i have the final file which i used for the final render which you see in the trailer so it's exactly the same setup so let me just give you a breakdown of everything what's going on and then i'll talk about the material light and all all of these uh, three have quite similar setup over here you can see the keys are uh, in the same pattern yeah so here i'm using the friction of 0 0.1, 0 0.5 for each of these and for the ground i'm using no friction no bounciness and convex hull and uh, just like the previous example we have a uh, force fields over here i think there are two force fields uh, i mixed up over here just to add more randomization for all three totems over here so yeah i just delete the bake so you guys can see what's going on there you go and uh, in the solver iteration i didn't use a high number so i think when i used the high number it was way too sensitive and uh, it, i mean um, you'll have to just play around with different settings all right so maybe more friction less friction more bounciness yes or no so it's there's no ideal setting for this one 
So you'll just have to just play around for the kind of duration you want the spinning to go on and uh, the kind of uh, the model's detail. So there are a lot of uh, factors which can affect the behavior. All right. So I had two fights. So in the first one, the friction is kind of set to zero. So it's uh, spinning for much longer duration. And in the second fight, for the last shot, I wanted all the three totems to stop kind of uh, at the same moment. So that's I saved the same file in a different version and increased the friction. Quite simple stuff going on over here and uh, you can study this file if you want. Now let's talk about uh, the material light and all that. I'll enable the, the look there mode over here. So let's just bring one uh, standard studio EXR which comes uh, default from with the blender. We'll quickly give you nice realistic looking uh, lights and shadows. Now for the ground I have uh, a PBR setup which is a quite basic one and these textures are from a texture heaven so you can just uh, download uh, these textures from or any other ground texture which you prefer so that's what's going on so just uh, plug the diffuse into diffuse and uh, floor tiles roughness into roughness normal map into normal map and this should give you nice looking floor over here Keep in mind, I'm go I'm gonna use uh, cycles for this one, but you can use EV if you want, and uh, I think uh, this should be pretty easy seen to render with the EV. And same for uh, for the totem, I'm using a basic PBR setup, so, uh, just like what we discussed in the introduction series of the Blender. Yes, I think uh, we have one metallic which I need to plug into metallic one over here. Sorry, this one is metallic and this one is metallic roughness. Once you have this, you can just uh, bring one camera. So let's bring up. Okay, let's add some lights over here first. So I, I have uh, two lights in the scene. So I have this uh, main uh, kind of uh, area light going on, which is uh, from the left, uh, I'm using a direction kind of a setup and the second one is uh, just introducing a nice cool color from the front. We all already have a HDR so I just don't, didn't want it to overload and uh, so I just didn't want it to add too much lights over here otherwise uh, it would interfere with the HDR which we are using in the background and that realistic effect will go away. So something in line with HDR we have. So I have one blue light over here and other light over here. So I quite like this ground texture and uh, I think uh, it's going to look good in render. So let's add one camera. So I disable these cameras. So let's add one camera over here and uh, control shift zero. I guess it's control alt zero. Yeah. So align to view and this camera we can choose camera number eight over here. I just uh, change the lens setting and enable the depth of field. Maybe if you want some like really, really interesting bokeh, you can play with the f-stop settings over here. So now after this, all you need to do is uh, find some interesting camera angles and uh, club everything into a nice sequence. I just totally forgot to bake the simulation over here. So once you have baked your simulation, you have added lights and uh, textures. So you have such good animation going on, realistic. I think this scene looks quite uh, cinematic and uh, you can actually make a nice sequence out of it. So once you have the simulation material set up and all that, all you need to do is find some interesting camera moves and edit it into a good sequence. So I think the frame looks quite cinematic and you could make a nice sequence out of it. So I'm quickly going to drag and drop a few presets from a Cinepack, which I have over here. So it's an add-on for Blender and there are plenty of different moves pre-recorded for the camera and rigged it into a nice setup. Let's say if I want to try out a push and pull. So you can try this in the pull. I have this twisted pull over here. So you, I can simply drag and drop this blend file over here, append, and uh, in the collection, select the camera. So I have this camera over here now. 
I can simply place it wherever I want and activate this camera from here. So I think it's camera number 008. So now you can see I have this twisted pull going on in the scene. And of course you can uh, retime it if you want. It's a pretty standard camera but pre-rigged with, uh, with the controls and everything. There are plenty of moves you can try out with this one. If you have a certain ideas about the cameras, you, you can just try that out. Or if you don't have like uh, anything in mind, you can just quickly uh, ease your work with these presets. So let's say if I drag and drop another preset over here. Append, collection, camera. So I have this another setup. Now this one is going to be a bit different. I think it's a handheld camera or something. Yeah. So it says like the camera have a handheld motion and it's a pulling up. And again, for these kind of small objects, you can always, uh, it's always better to have some sort of depth of field and uh, bring down the, the f-stop. So this pack is from one of the fellow artists, Lewis Martin, who is experienced uh, cinematographer. And I find this pack quite useful for quickly exploring different camera moves without getting into rigging and setup parts. And it's nicely categorized. There are plenty of camera moves to try out, easy to customize. If you are doing a product presentation or even trying out some different cinematic shots, give it a try. You can download this collection from of cameras from Blender Market. The link is in the description. And I think uh, it quickly gives you pretty nice uh, cinematic look. So just try it out. And uh, once you have your camera angles and everything, just uh, go to the render properties over here. Make sure it's set to cycle. And uh, for final render, I used 256 samples. But I think you can use around 180. should be fine with the Optic, OpticX denoiser. For any super close-up shots, like for uh, shots which are like really tightly uh, close to the object, I think you might would need to use 256 samples because otherwise the optic X is going to over smoothen the surface of, of the totem objects. So for let's, for these kind of uh, views, it's nice. It's uh, better to use a uh, higher sampling. Otherwise these texture details uh, might would go away with the optic X denoiser. So that's about it for this chapter and uh, I hope uh, this was useful and if you prefer EV, I think you can do that as well. Uh, as you can see over here, pretty much everything other than the depth of field uh, is looking great over here. So if I change this into EV, I think uh, we should be able to render this out. but. The globe for the global illumination, I think you'll have to add some sort of uh, the light probes over here. All right, guys. So I think we are pretty much done. The only thing uh, we need to do is render out the sequence. And uh, for this tutorial, I have already rendered the sequence. You can see in the trailer, even though it's such a simple topic, simple object, the overall look of the sequence is something, something interesting about this. So I think it looks very cinematic and uh, I like the music and it, it was perfectly going with this uh, scene. Jazz. I love jazz. So do share your results with me and uh, tag me on the Instagram with InstacrossMind. I will be holding a workshop related to how to approach your first animated short film. I will be doing that on Patreon. So the workshop is for 27th of Feb. I will be discussing a plenty of things which can help you with your first animated project. So if you're interested in uh, that kind of stuff, just uh, check out the Patreon page and uh, we will be holding uh, many more workshops in the future talk about the animation design and motion design in general and not just focus on the 3d part so there is much more which i want to share with you guys uh, so just check it out and let me know for the next chapter we are going to discuss how to make uh, abstract motion with the particle force fields and uh, we are going to create this scene over here so i'll upload that within this week so stay tuned subscribe if you haven't subscribed let me know what you think about this chapter. I'll see you guys in the next chapter. The link for the for the Cinepack is in the description. Do check it out. I think it's quite useful. And uh, you can quickly just place it in your project and get some interesting cinematic shots. I'll see you guys in the next chapter. Stay tuned. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.